Hey guys, I hope everyone's having a good day so far. So for today's tutorial, I wanted to kind of show everybody how to create this comic style text effect, which I thought was pretty neat. Before we get into it, I want to show you where I got the inspiration for this. So I got the inspiration from this animated logo made by Fraser Davidson. I thought it was really cool. I really like how it popped, the colors are vibrant, and it had that nice kind of comic style explosion in the background. So if you like this, I'll put his um, info in the description. You can check out more of his work. But other than that, let's get into Photoshop. Now that we're in Photoshop, we're gonna create our canvas and it's gonna be 1280 by 720 with a resolution of 300 and an RGB color mode. So once that's ready, we'll hit create. First thing we're gonna do is create our text. So the color I'm gonna be using today is gonna be EF3A1D. With that set, I'm gonna make sure it's set to 84 size and babe was new. I'll have that in the description if you don't have it. And I'm gonna write our text. Next, what I'm going to do is just hit Control T to just align it to the middle. Then I'm going to rasterize the type by hitting right click, selecting rasterize type, and I'm select my lasso tool, and I'm going to circle around the second letter. And the entire reason we're doing this is so that we could cut out every single letter individually, because once you do that, you get a new layer via cut. It'll create a new layer with that letter removed now, and we're going to do that for each uh, letter. So that'll be the O and then the last letter. So if you get this uh, message right here, it's just because you need to go back to the original one. As you can see, we circled nothing. So you want to make sure it's set to the original text layer. So now that it's that, so I want to show you guys that error if that happens to you guys. You want to make sure you go back to the last one and then just circle this one. And there we go. Layer, new, via cut. So now they should all be on their own individual layer. Next, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just hit V. I'm gonna select the next layer and I'm just gonna move it slightly down. I'm gonna hold down shift so that it moves down in a straight line. Then I'm gonna select this one and I'm gonna move it slightly up. And then the M, I'm gonna move it slightly down. And then the B slightly up. And there we go. Once that's complete, all the bottom layer selected, I'm gonna hold down shift and select the top layer, right click and merge those layers. I'm gonna go to edit, transform, perspective. And from the bottom left corner, I'm just gonna pull outwards and from the top left corner, go inwards. And that'll create that effect. So that's gonna be preparing our text. For our next step, we're gonna hit control J to duplicate that layer. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna hit color overlay. And I'm just gonna make one that's a very distinct color. So I'm just gonna make it green. Then I'm gonna just hit Control T and hit once down on my key, on my arrow keys and hit enter. Next, I'm gonna hold down Control, Alt, Shift and T. And every time I hit T, it's gonna duplicate the layer and move it one pixel down. And so I'm gonna do this about 30 to 40 times. So there you go. And that's gonna kind of start creating that 3D effect. And on the 40th layer, I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom of my layer panel, hold down shift and select the first layer. And then once they're all selected, I'm gonna hit merge layers. So now they're all together. So that's gonna start creating our 3D effect. So now that we created the 3D layer, we're gonna be adding a checkered pattern into where the green is. So I'm gonna have a uh, checkered pattern in the description for you guys to use for the sake of simplicity and I'm just going to shrink it down to where I can't see the green anymore and once that's complete I'm going to hit enter then I'm going to create a gradient map to go on top of it and this is what it's going to allow me to change the colors so for my red I'm going to be using this red it's going to be F30202 I'm going to hit OK and for my yellow I'm going to be using FFBD0A, I'm gonna hit OK. Once that's ready, all I'm gonna do is right click and create a clipping mask so that it goes into just the checker pattern. So with that created, the gradient map will still be selected. I'm gonna hold down shift, select that checker pattern. I'm gonna right click and merge those two layers. Then while it's still on top of that green text layer, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create another clipping mask. And that's what's gonna give us that checkered pattern look. 
and then you can obviously um, increase the size of the checker pattern if you want bigger check mark or a bigger checkered pattern or just shrink it and duplicate it so you have smaller ones up to you so that's going to be it for this part so now that we have the checkered pattern in the text so we're going to be adding a stroke now so first thing i'm going to do is this top layer right here i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to duplicate it by hitting ctrl j and i'm going to turn it off for now I'll, i can always just right click make red to let me know um, so i don't lose it and then we're going to work with just these two right now so the first thing i'm going to do is the top layer i'm just going to give it a stroke of 10 outside positioning and the color I'm gonna be using today, it's gonna be 4A3A23. It's gonna be a dark brown. I'm gonna hit okay. And now for the gradient checkered pattern, I'm gonna just give it another stroke, same style. Uh, pixels of 10, positioning outside and up that same brown color. And there we go. So now we have a little bit more of a deeper 3D effect going on. So now what we're going to do is add some highlights to the text. So this is where it's going to get a little bit trickier. So you're going to want to turn these off layers and that last layer that we duplicated. We're going to start with this one and you're going to hit Control J again so we can duplicate it one more time. So the bottom layer right here, we're going to actually change the color to white. So we're going to want it to just be all white you're not going to see a difference right now because we still have that other layer going so you can't see it because we have a white background so now you're going to want to just right click and rasterize the layer style so that it's permanently white you're going to turn on that red layer and all you're going to want to do is hold down alt and click in between so that you can create a clipping mask you could also just do it with um, right click and once that's ready you're going to hit Control t and you're just gonna move right on your keyboard three times. One, two, three, and down on your keyboard, on your arrow keys three times. One, two, three. So I know you can't see it right now. You'll only be able to see it once you turn on the other layers. And you can see we can start adding the highlights. And if you want bigger highlights, you just go to that clipping mask again, and you just keep moving it further down to the right and to the bottom. So I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three to the right. One, two, three to the bottom and we hit enter and there we go now we have our highlights for our text so now that we added the highlights for our text we're going to be adding one big stroke to kind of connect all the lines so the only simple way to do this i'm going to just select that top layer hold down shift select the bottom layer and then hit Control g and that's just going to group everything into one group layer then i'm going to double click and i'm going to add a stroke and it's going to be a white stroke it could be any color you'd want and I'm gonna make it stroke of 20, positioning outside. And obviously right now you can't see it, so I'm gonna go to the bottom layer and I'm gonna add a solid color layer. And I'm gonna select kinda just like a darker gray so you can kinda see, and you'll now be able to see our text. So that's gonna be um, the main text effect. So now what we're gonna be doing is just adding background elements to go along with the look. So now that we have the text completed, we're gonna be adding some of the background elements to complete the look. So what you're going to want to do is go to window, go to shapes, and you're going to want to be using legacy shapes and more. If you don't have that in your shapes panel, you can just go to this little hamburger and select legacy shapes and uh, more, and that'll create that little folder for you. So then we're going to be opening it and going to all legacy default shapes. And we're going to go into the bottom where it goes to symbols. And there's two you can use. You can use the starburst effect or you could use um, this explosion effect. And it's going to be up to you. So for this design, we're going to be using the starburst effect just because I think it looks a little bit nicer. You're going to want to make sure that your shape tool is set to custom shape tool with the starburst shape selected up here. And I'm going to go with my mouse from my top left all the way to the top right to kind of create that shape. And there we go. I'm going to just make sure this tab is out of the way. For the fill, I'm going to make sure the fill is set to yellow. And there we go. Then I'm just going to hit Control T. Kind of just put it in the middle, resize it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger so you can see more of the explosion. And then I'm going to hit enter. So, so to want to make it a little bit more of your own um, instead of just replicating the same shape, you could always make sure the mouse is set to direct selection tool and you can just double click on the point 
and then you'll move it and then it'll say hey this is going to turn into a regular path continue yes and from here on out you can just start moving these little points and kind of just manipulating how you want them to look you can make them you know longer or shorter or pointier however you want it to look that way you can get your own um, custom look how you want it to look for whatever project you're working on as well so obviously there's different ways you can change it so just wanted to give that tip so once that's complete we can move forward with uh, the other background elements all right so our next one is all we're gonna do is duplicate by hitting Control J on that star layer and our fill is gonna be set to none and then I'm gonna set a red fill which will be the ones we've been using earlier and then on my stroke pattern, I'm just gonna make sure it's square corners. So I want sharp edges and I'm gonna want it to line inside. So once that's complete, I'm gonna hit Control T and all I'm gonna do is just rotate a little bit and shrink it down to give it more of an offset look. So at this point, it starts to become more of your own custom look how you want things to look for yourself. So then we're gonna create two more texture patterns after this. And so for the next uh, background element, I'm going to be using another pattern. So this one you can use your own. This is just going to be a zigzag pattern I found online. I'll link it to you uh, so that if you want to, you can feel free to grab it. So all I'm going to do is this pattern is a little bit too small for my taste. So I'm just going to hit Control J and then Control T. And I'm just going to move it like that. Hit Control. Uh, J again and just duplicate it so that I can just move it across three times and I'm just going to repeat this until I have the you know uh, big enough so that it can cover a wide area as well so this tutorial is a little bit more on the redundant side because there's a lot of things you have to kind of create and this is just the problem of uh, more complex designs. So I'm gonna merge those layers and all I'm gonna do is just extend that and extend it that way. So I want it just enough where it can cover the entire thing. I'm gonna hit enter. Now what I'm going to do is just color overlay so I can change the color to what I need it to be, which is um, a bright red. So I'll just be grabbing from the red I've been using. Hit OK, hit OK. Then all I'm going to do is hit control, hold down control on my keyboard and select with my mouse. And then that'll create this selected outline. And all I'm going to hit is layer mask and that it's going to create a layer mask based off the information I gave it. Then I'm just going to hit control T. And I'm gonna rotate it, make it a little bit smaller because it is a bit of an obnoxious uh, look. I'm gonna hit enter. I'm gonna put this one in the back just so that it's not so crazy looking or uh, just hurt. <laughs> it hurts the eyes. Um, so I'm gonna do that. And you can just put it to however you want it to go. And there we go. And now, time for us to create our final. Um, background layer. Okay, and so for our final uh, main background, we're gonna be using another texture, which I'll also be linking. So you'll start to see that as you design more and more, having uh, already textures and patterns already um, in your library kind of makes things a lot easier. So I'm gonna be using this dotted pattern. I'll be putting that in the description. So what I'm gonna just have to do is color range, select the black, so I only want the black to stay there, press OK. And I'm just gonna create a layer mask. Then once all the white is gone, I'm gonna apply that layer mask. So before you apply it, you just have to um, rasterize the layer, then I can apply the layer mask. Next, all I'm going to do is do the same thing I did with the previous pattern. I'm gonna select um, the yellow starburst uh, design, and then I'm gonna add another layer mask to this one. So it creates a layer mask based off that data. I'm gonna hit Control T and I'm just gonna rotate it a little bit and that's gonna give me that look. So and I'm just gonna shrink it down and then just hit enter. And I'll put this one kind of in the back as well. So 
it's not super hard to look at. So that's going to be the main um, text and background layers. And then if you want to go the extra mile as well, you could also just um, go to your polygon tool, uh, make sure it's set to three and then just start going. And then you can just start creating your own little triangles and then just uh, moving them around uh, the project. And that'll be it. The, you just help you create little um, more elements to kind of just tie in the design together and make it look like there are some things exploding, things like that. Um, and then you don't have to stick to them being only red as well. So just different things, wherever your creativity leads you to as well. So, but other than that, that's going to be the entire effect. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know this one was a bit of like more on the complicated side. I have more tutorials that are more complicated like this. Um, they take more time. And um, if you have a better understanding of Photoshop um, are still easy to do. So if you did like this tutorial, let me know in the comments. Um, I'll be happy to show the other ones. Um, this one was kind of a, a, a test phase to see if uh, people do like these kind of tutorials, if they want a little bit more advanced ones that I would like to do, if you are, uh, your fundamentals are a lot better. I'll be more than happy to do it. So let me know if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer. I know this one was tough, but other than that, have a good rest of your day.